Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about double masters and the value that the current the current values of how much it would cost you to get a box, a VIP box, free booster packs, and so on. This set is pretty expensive. Um, it's actually similar to Ultimate Masters in price as of right now. Ultimate Masters is also going for about 300, 310. Now I will answer probably the question that you want to know most up front is how much does this cost for me to buy this or for a local game store. I've been quoted two prices, uh, one $195 and the other one $210. So I'm going to go ahead and say that depending on your distributor, the volume you buy, you're getting this for let's say $200 if you buy in enough volume for a small local game store. So I still talk to distributors because on paper, I actually still own a store, but the product just gets sent to my home instead. And then I just sell them on Amazon. Uh, we sold a lot of Legos, Legos and board games. Uh, so we, we have a lot of board games now uh, and they are selling well. So back to this product, if a store buys it for 200 and they sell it for 300 or more. So Amazon, so if you sell on Amazon, the only reason Wizard of Coast can sell on Amazon is because they're not buying it for 200, right? They're getting it for almost free, whatever the cost of the goods and transportation is. Amazon is going to take 20% off the top. And then if you want to do Amazon Prime, which you want to do, and you have to pay a storage fee and shipping fee and packaging fee uh, so it's about 25 30 percent on a product like magic cards which i have sold on amazon before so you're out 30 percent you sell on ebay you're out anywhere between 12 to 18 percent uh, depending on the structure and then shipping you always have to do free shipping tcg player takes anywhere between 12 to 15 percent depending on the structure I think uh, direct is more expensive, just like Amazon Prime would be more expensive, but you do sell more. So in terms of is there profit in this product? Absolutely. So don't think that the game store or the Rudy's or the TCG players, they're, they're making money. The NVPs, they're make, they're all, everyone here is making money off you. Then no one would sell for less money than they make, right? It would be insane. It would be like Dragon Maze, right? Um, but that's also the inherent risk for any set, even a set as hyped as double masters, there is a risk that it could just sit on the, now you might say, Oh, no one would think yes, double masters. The risk is much less than let's say dragon maze or Pharaoh's beyond death or front of the elder in there are plenty of stores with boxes and boxes of Throne of the Elder Inn that cannot sell because you banned its number one card and arguably the number two card, uh, Once Upon a Time and Oko. So not many people are super interested in you know, buying a box where if you get the best mythic, it's banned. If you get the best rare, it is banned. So you invested in that and at the time it was a good investment and you stockpiled your store of Throne of the Elder Inn, maybe even collector's boosters, like other people suggested, and now you're stuck, and that's dead product. You just lost a ton of money. It's not just the money that you lost um, in having dead product. It's also the fact that the dead product cannot make you future money, which is really important, the cash flow aspect, which very few people talk about. You need to sell core 2021 right now. By the time Double Masters comes out, which is very soon, you need to sell as much core as possible, whatever it is, collectors, regular boxes, so you can buy as much of this as possible and then flip it. It's just a flipping game. Um, it, it's all about flipping the things for as fast as you can for as much money as you can. Uh, there's no other... Um, it's just a game of flipping boxes. Uh, before the next set, which then you're, you're in this cycle, you're in this, and that's why a lot of places, 
including uh, DNA Comics down where I am, my friend's store, my store, MTG Line. I, you just cannot. Like, Legos is not about flipping. Legos, you sell the things um, when, and obviously COVID-19 has helped Legos tremendously in sales and board games. It's less about flipping and more about building a relationship with your customer because your customer is going to continue to buy Legos forever. And they might want to buy the Harry Potter Legos. They might want to buy the Frozen 2 Legos. They might buy some mystery Legos. And Magic, there's, there's no urgency to flip your Lego sets. In Magic, there is urgency every 90 days that you need to sell the new product, the old product, to buy the new product. And that's the problem. And that will be the problem with Double Masters as well. I mean, it's one of these crazy things when I think about it. People are so hyped on it. But what happens when, if it doesn't sell? What happens if they produce too much of it? Like, for instance, Jumpstart, or for instance, uh, Dragon Maze is a good example, or Throne of the Elder Inn. I mean, go to your local game store. I guarantee you they still have boxes of Throne of the Elder Inn for $100 a box that they cannot move. They can't move them. I, I saw Dave and Adam try to move Throne of the Elder Inn for 90 and they couldn't move it for 90 And there's very little profit in it after shipping and so on out at 90 if any at all. Um, so when you talk about the risk to the game store, if the product sells, yeah, if I buy for 200 and I sell you for 300 even if I'm paying Amazon margins, I'm still making money. The risk is if I sit on dead product and no one really tells you about this and you don't really, I mean, you kind of know about it, but you really feel it as a store. So if I sell a box for a hundred, I pretty much make money, right? There's no way even with overhead that I lose money selling a box at a hundred dollars, given that I'm buying a box around 80. But if the box I'm buying at 80 does not sell, it would take me to sell four boxes at 100 to recoup the one box at 80 that does not sell. And that's the scary part for a game store when I'm ordering. And that's why when you see so many people hype up the set, hype up the set, because they're trying to sell as many as possible. It's just a cash flow issue. No one wants to buy the second newest product. They always want to buy the newest product, right? The newest uh, drop, the newest release, the newest video game, right? No one's like, oh, I, I really wanted to buy the video game three months ago. No, no, you would have bought it at release is the time that most people um, would pay full price for it. Maybe three months later, you're not paying full price. And then my margins are bad. And plus, I'm sit I sat on the stock inventory for 90 days, which is not doesn't feel great. So maybe I reduced the price, but I'd much rather sell day one because it's like, Hey, I gave you $200. I, I, I'm changing $200 for $300. That's pretty good. But that can only happen if I hype the product and I shift as much of it on day one as possible. And that's why you see many YouTubers open these boxes early, much earlier than release date, um, because they're shipping and hyping. And But at the end of the day, the main danger is not necessarily the margins. It's after a period of time, triple masters will come out. Quadruple masters. You, you think I'm kidding, but I mean, double masters. They told us there was no more master sets. Merrill told us and lied to us yet again that there were no more master sets for a while. And then boom, double masters. It's like, what, what happened here? I thought we were not going to do any more master sets for a while. This product is fascinating for many reasons. It's going to tank the price of these single cards to some a level that you haven't seen before. Because again, it's about the same price as Ultimate Masters right now. It has double box toppers. It has double rares and mythics. And let's be quite frank here. Literally, it is double the value of Ultimate Masters. If Ultimate Masters is $300 right now on eBay... And this is $300 on eBay, Amazon. Well, I mean, you can kind of do some simple math and say, would I rather have Ultimate Masters at $300 or this product at $300? Which has double Ultimate Masters, including box hoppers, of course. 
uh, yes, I would rather have this product, which is twice as good for the same price. Even if the product isn't twice as good, it doesn't need to be. It's the same price. It just has to be a tiny bit better, which I know it is better. So people who invested in Ultimate Masters at even $300, again, you have to look at margins. Margins, margins, margins. Like That's what makes um, a business go. And honestly, if I was a store, I would want to move as much of this product as soon as I can because Ultimate Masters is sitting there on my shelves. Would I rather have something that I can sell today and make 100 bucks, Or would I rather have something that potentially could go up, I guess, in the next 5, 10 years? No. And that's why the investing in boxes doesn't really make very much sense to me because... Um, there's so many better things you can invest long term, real estate, homes, housing, businesses, whatever, like there are stocks, stocks have been pretty strong right now. Even bonds like would outperform this or a mutual fund of some type. It's really, really hard selling sealed product, even as a store. And I understood that going into it, but I never like expected it to be that hard because every the problem is the sealed product market is dominated by the card kingdoms, the Rudy's, the huge online vendors, that MVP sports that always has like a cut edge price. You're not going to compete with them because if you're a brand new store, you don't have the eBay, um, eBay reviews. You don't have the TCG player customer reviews. You don't have the SEO. You don't have the website. You don't have these things. So you need a large capital investment to build up or even, you know, a YouTube channel. Many of these stores don't have YouTube channels, uh, which I think is silly, but nonetheless, that is true. Um, you need a large capital investment to get any traction in selling a box, a single box. These things are much harder. You know, dual lands, they sell like crazy. They're, I mean, I still get requests every day to sell. <laughs> and I was like, no, I can't sell you my dual lands now because I only have 400. And they, they're in a 20 by 20 poster, essentially. And it would be, um, I'd get OCD if uh, even I didn't have one of them. But you must understand that dual lands are easy to sell because they're a single card. A box is really difficult to sell. And there's all types of scams. I mean, there's scams involving dual lands, of course. But not to the frequency there is for boxes, even on Amazon. Bye, guys.